goodness, did I just have sex outside of church? Who am I? I was really surprised with myself because like literally pretty much I, we were on church grounds. Sorry, God. Yeah. <laughs> I wish someone told me. I wish someone told me. I wish someone told me that you need to be selfish, absolutely selfish. It's a lot of hype. I wish someone had told me that sex is so much more than just a man and a woman or penetrative sex. Like it goes way beyond that. I wish someone told me when I was losing my virginity that I don't have to do it if I'm not ready. I wish someone told me that losing my virginity would make me think that I would end up falling in love with the person, having the white picket fence, the nice car. I guess the disappointment too that comes with it because none of that shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish that someone had told me that there is no morality in it. I was raised very Christian and um, was raised with the idea that once you have sex before marriage, you're different after that, meaning like you're less pure. If you have sex, you'll like shrivel up and die and burn up, so it was like, don't do it. Okay, let's set the scene, shall we? Summer 2007, New York City, Harlem. My best friend, which it was weird because we were best friends, but we liked each other. And we would like tap kiss and like we'd spoken about sex and stuff like that. And he was like, oh, you should come over. We should watch Love and Basketball. And I was like, this is it. I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give him the draws. My father was a minister, music minister, and so I would travel with him a lot. We traveled out of state to a, like a church, and I knew I was going before, so this was like MySpace days, and I was talking to this guy online, and I told him like, you know, I'll be in your city for a church event, and he was like, okay, you know, I wanna see you. So I'm sitting in church, I look back, he's in the church, and then, you know, he gives me like a, you know, like a nod to go out. So I go out, I follow him, and we went behind the church, had sex. So how did you feel like immediately after when you came back to the church? Honestly, I felt like everyone could tell. I felt like everyone knew. You know, I got back in, everyone was like looking at me, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, this can you tell? So I, I felt guilty, convicted, everything that I thought I would feel, I felt. For some strange reason, I kept my bra on for the entire time. I don't know whether I thought I was protecting myself. <laughs> But I remember distinctly, and I remember the bra. I had picked out the perfect lingerie, um, great little outfit, um, had everything from garter belts to like stockings. Realized that was completely unnecessary, both then and in life in general ever since then. He had a white intrepid. I do remember. <laughs> Spacious? I do. Um, you know, we made it work. I ended up hanging out with him on a Friday. It was right after school, and so we ended up going to the abandoned mansion. We were drinking for loco. The feeling started flowing, and the girls got their razzle-dazzle. <laughs> Trust. I definitely planned on hooking up with him. I mean, every girl in the school wanted him. So I figured that if I got him, it would make all them mad and somehow respect me. As a trans woman, especially at that time, so this was like 2010 or so, there wasn't a lot of language around like how to be an ally to trans women. And then to just keep it real, a lot of cis women just be hating because the trans girls just be bringing it. And that's what I felt about the girls in my school because I was very like self-conscious about how I presented myself. So I had like the nice weave, the nice clothes. I just felt like it wasn't necessarily a community at that time that was willing to see me in my femininity and my womanhood. And so, yeah, I just always wanted to make a bitch know it. My friend was having a really big party at his house. His parents weren't there. I ended up with this girl who happened to be like the person that all the boys had crushes on. <laughs> and we ended up like in my 
friend's bedroom and we had sex and I had not been planning on it. I had no idea what was gonna happen, but I, like all I knew was like, okay, this is, this is good. I feel good right now. And I remember he didn't have curtains on his window and his window was really tall. He, he lived on the last floor and outside of his window, you can see the moon. And it was a full moon outside. So I thought that was like so romantic, right? It was not romantic in any way, shape or form. The only thing romantic I think was me, that I just, I'm me. And he was handsome. It had the potential, but it was not romantic at all. When I made the decision to have sex the first time, it was just that. It was me making the decision. It wasn't something that I felt pressured into. It wasn't something that I did on a whim. It was something that I did because I wanted to and I felt like I was ready. I considered losing my virginity two times because the first time I had a man try to take it from me. Even though it was traumatizing, he wasn't able to. The next few years, I then spent trying to prove something to myself that I wasn't broken down there because he made me feel like it was my own fault. So it was a really, really hard time and I had a lot of sex that I did not want to do. It was for the guy. And then I remember the first time, me technically, I feel like this was the ideal losing my virginity situation. I was 26 and I had met this guy and he took his time and he was so patient and it was what I had wanted all along. It felt great leading up to the actual point. Um, you know, it was really painful though. Physically overall, the first time I had sex, it was so uncomfortable. First of all, his bed was like a twin size bed. Second of all, it just didn't feel good. Like I felt like I had my period almost. That came later, that came with experience, that came with practice. <laughs> but for my very first time, I, I don't think that I can say that I felt pleasure. It did not last long. It was a very short amount of pleasure, very quick pleasure. <laughs> it took me a couple of years before I experienced a total orgasm and it was wonderful. Uh, and it made me realize that this was something enjoyable and fun to do. And it made me feel nice and relaxed. So I uh, kept doing it. I didn't, I think I told like one person, but I really was, uh, it's like, oh, it was nothing. Like, I, I really wanted to pretend that it didn't happen. And I also didn't think that it counted because she was a woman and I was a woman. So I was like, that doesn't count. It has to be a man and a woman. I left right after that and I immediately bleeped my dad and I'm like, daddy, come get me. And of course my dad came to rescue me and we just sat in the car for a little while in silence. And then he was like, you know, whenever you're ready, we can talk about whatever is going on. And I told my dad and he was like, super chill, super cool. He was like, did you use a condom? I'm like, yes, I put it on myself. Imagine your 14 year old daughter telling you she put on a condom on somebody else herself. It made me look at things different. Like this is the type of parent I wanna be. This is the type of person I wanna be in the future. I thought it was going to be like, fireworks and like the movies, but it wasn't. It was like bushes and like mosquitoes. In television and the movies, it's always just like, oh, you just, you know, get so into it. It's in you, you know, you go to another place and you're just, you're not thinking, you're just acting and you're doing. And that wasn't my experience. I was very much thinking. So if I had had adults in my life who were more open and less shameful about bodies and about sex and about homosexuality, then I wouldn't have needed to be so secretive and I wouldn't have needed to be ashamed or like do anything unsafe. I will say if anything, it gave me confidence in some ways helped me understand not only my own body, but also maybe what type of men might be attracted to me and not having this mindset that I'll be reduced down to a certain type of guy. So if anything, I think me being able to have sex with this straight guy kind of let me know like, okay, straight men isn't this. Just let me know I got options, honey. Some good options too. Yeah, no, it would have not been at church. It would have been a nice bed, candles, a dinner before. It would have been the whole nine. Yes, I'm worth that. It should have been that. Don't mistake compliments for love and don't mistake attention for, for love. I wish I knew my body more, way more. Like now, I know my body. You know what I mean? Like now I know my body. Now I know the spots. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, woo! Communicate, you know? 
talk about it to the point of you can be obnoxious about it. You know, people love to talk about it, especially if they're involved with you in this act. I still struggle, but it definitely took me a really long time to enjoy sex. Just to feel comfortable in my body, in my skin, in my person, and to know that whatever's gonna happen in that moment, it's gonna be okay. Um, and I do have the power. No one else has the power over me but me.